Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a photoresistor with an Arduino. So a photoresistor is an analog sensor that reads the value of light in an environment. So this doesn't simply tell you whether the lights are on or whether the lights are off, but it actually tells you how bright the lights are in a particular environment. So this might be useful if you're doing some kind of Arduino project where you're trying to grow plants. So let's say you're using a soil moisture sensor, you're doing a couple of other things things, you're trying to figure out why some plants grow better than others. Well, one of the reasons may be is that maybe some plants get more sunlight uh, than other plants. So you can use a photoresistor to be able to find out what the value of light in an, in an environment is and then be able to log that into a database or into a file or something like that so that you can go back and then analyze the information and what you might find out is, oh, these plants over here, they actually get more light than the plants over here and therefore that's what's going on. So basically all a photoresistor does is it allows you to see how much light there is in an environment uh, and then you're able to turn that into a value for a variable and do with that as you will. So with that let's go over to the workbench so I can show you how to build this particular project then I will show you the code and we'll bring it all together and show you how it works. So here is our project already assembled. Uh, there's really not a whole lot to this project, but there are a couple of things. There are a couple of things that are kind of a gotchas with this project, uh, just to keep in mind when you're going to be assembling it. So we're going to be using our Arduino Uno board, like we do for many of our projects. The important thing, if you're going to be using a different Arduino board, is simply that you need analog inputs, which basically any any board should be able to give you. So with this one, we're gonna be using A5, analog five, and this is going to be giving us the value from the photo uh, resistor sensor here, right? Uh, then past that, uh, what we have is we have the power wires. So we have uh, the VCC, the power going in, and the power going in to this photo resistor is we are having at five volts. Now it is important to understand that I did play around with this, and you can use 3.3 volts in out order to power the sensor the only difference is, is, since it's an analog sensor, you will get different value readings if you only give it 3.3 volts. So that's just something to realize, is you can give it 3 volts or you can give it 5 volts, but if you're going to do things like if-else statements, the important thing to realize is that if you're using 3.3 volts, uh, the number that you're going to get is much smaller. So just decide whether you're going to use 5 or 3 and always use that. Then we're going to go over here and we're going to see how this thing is built. And again, it's it's a little a little wonky compared to uh, how some of the electronic projects uh, we create are. So the first thing is we have our, our VCC, we have our five volt, and that is going into the positive pin on this uh, uh, photoresistor sensor. So that comes in here. Then the next thing that we have going on, which is kind of weird, is we have a resistor. So I am using a 220 ohm resistor here. And so we're going to put that in line with the ground for the photo resistor. And then in the exact same line as the ground, for the photoresistor, we are going to put the sensor output. So you have the ground for the photoresistor, you have one prong of the resistor, and then you have the sensor all in a line. And then the sensor goes over to your, to your A5. Then what you have is you have the resistor, and the resistor then comes over and actually connects to the normal ground. So this is kind of a wonky thing. Uh, we haven't seen this a lot in a lot of projects, but basically when you're having the photoresistor is so the sensor wire is off of the ground off of the photoresistor, but you're also using a resistor here. We're using the 220 ohm resistor, and then we're connecting that to ground on the board, and that's what brings us all together. Now, if you go and look at other people's projects, you may notice that they say to use different resistors. Uh, so when I was doing some research on this, a lot of people said to use 4.7K resistors. Uh, some of the people said to use 10K resistors. Uh, and from what I found is the tolerance for this photoresistor, you're not going to burn it out if you use only something like a, a 220 ohm resistor. You're just going to get different values, right? So if I use a, if I use a, a 4.7K resistor, 
the values that I get out of this will be in the hundreds, right? So it'll be like 800 or 300 or 445. Whereas if I use a 220 ohm resistor, the values I get out of it are 80 and 90 and 30 and 60. So I really haven't found any problems using a 220 ohm resistor. Uh, it doesn't burn out. It doesn't cause any problems with the photoresistor itself. Uh, the main difference is, again, you just simply get different numbers. So again, if you're doing if-else statements, if you're using a 4.7 K resistor and you're using if-else statements, then you're going to have to realize your numbers are going to be in the hundreds. Whereas if you use a 220 ohm resistor, then you have to realize your values are going to be in the tens. So the 40, 50, 30, 60, or whatever else. So the main thing with this, the main thing with this, since this is an analog sensor, is the output is all based on the electricity going in and the resistance. So the more resistance you have, the more or less electricity you have, the different values you're going to get. So if you're going to be creating if-else statements, you just have to remember that those if-else statements have to correspond to whatever voltage you're putting in and whatever resistors you're putting in. So with this particular project, I'm using uh, five volts and I'm using a 220 uh, resistor. Uh, you can use a 4.7K resistor and you can use the 3.3 volts, but your readings are simply going to be different. So that's one of the things just to keep in mind here. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the code. So here's the code for this particular project. So it is important to understand with this project, all we're going to be doing is reading the value that this photoresistor is providing. So that is going to be printed out to the serial monitor and that is it. That's why this code is so simple. So first thing that we need to do is we need to define the light sensor pin. So uh, pound define and we're going to call it light sensor and then it's going to be connected to analog uh, port five. So A5, this could be A0, one, two, three, four or A5. Then we're going to do go down and we're going to set up the environment so void setup and all we're going to do is serial.begin 9600 so we are going to be starting the serial monitor then past that what we're going to do is we're going to go into the loop so the loop and we're going to create an integer for a light level so basically this is the variable that we're going to be reading and now we have to set a value for that variable and to set the value for that light level variable we are going to do the analog read function so analog read reads the analog signal from the light sensor. So basically what we're saying is read the value coming in from A5 and assign that value to the variable light level. Then all we're going to do is serial.println the value for light level and then delay for a thousand milliseconds or one second and loop, 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 loop. So this is going to dynamically show us the amount of light that this photoresistor is seeing at the particular point in time. So with that, let's uh, let's upload this code and I can show you how this works. Okay, so I've uploaded the code. We have our, uh, our Arduino plugged into our computer so we can read the serial monitor and also power the Arduino. And here we have our little photo resistor. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to tools, we're going to open serial monitor, and then we're going to see the value that the photo resistor is seeing. So you can see this is a very well lit environment. So this is in my studio. I have a lot of lights pointed at me and I'm getting a value somewhere between 90 to 95. Now, now it is important with these analog sensors. Um, the numbers you get can be a bit flaky. A lot of times you get a range of numbers. It's not simply that you get 95 and you just constantly get that. A lot of times with the fluctuations with electricity or fluctuations with a sensor, you will get a range. And so with this, even though the light isn't changing at all, we get a range of about five, you know, anywhere between 89 to about 95. And so this is just something to keep in mind where whenever you're using using uh, the values of analog sensors for variables for if else statements you, you you don't want to be too precise with it right so we can see this is 90 or 89 so I may want to trigger something to happen at 70 or 60 um, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't want something to, to happen between 88 to 89 if that makes any kind of sense so with that uh, we can see like I say it's getting anywhere between 89 to about 95 and then if I come over and I put my hand uh, over the sensor we can see now the light level has dropped and now now again we're seeing like 53 54 and we're still getting that fluctuation now if i reach underneath the table and i actually turn out the lights to my studio we, so we can see it's pretty dark right now then we can see the number goes down to you know somewhere between 13 to 16. so it is important to understand that uh that over there i actually still have some lights on in the rest of my basement and so this is still able to read those lights so at a dark 
arc level like this, we're still getting that number. If I completely put my hand over it, then we can see we go all the way down to zero. But the important thing to see is that you really do get a wide, wide range of values here, depending on how much light the sensor is actually reading. And so that's really all there is uh, to this photoresistor sensor and how you're able to read the value that it's able to provide you. So that's all there is to using an analog photoresistor sensor on an Arduino. So you're able to take the number, again, since it's analog, you get a nice range there, anywhere from zero to about 100 for, for what I'm dealing with here. And then depending on what's going on, you can either trigger alerts to happen or th th trigger lights to turn on or log, log events, that type of thing. So if you're thinking about like why you might use a sensor like this, this may be valuable again. If you have something like a little herb garden, let's say you have an herb garden, you're trying to figure out why it's not growing as well as it should, you put one of those little Arduino projects there again with a soil moisture sensor, maybe a temperature sensor, and you can have a nice little environmental sensor suite uh, to try to determine why your plants uh, may not be growing the way that you would want them to grow. Or one of the things to be thinking about, again, one of the important things with Arduinos is the idea of being able to trigger physical events based off of sensor readings is in a lot of office environments now, one of the good things with office environments is they're, that they're trying to provide more natural light. So we have more skylights and we have more windows, right? So we have more light coming in from the natural world. That's good for our health. That's good for energy efficiency. That's great for a lot of things. One of the problems you may run into though is what happens if it's cloudy or what happens if a storm comes in, right? So a lot of times people's productivity goes down based off of the light level. So if a lot of light is provided in your office environment by the natural light situation, if the outside gets dark for some reason, having a sensor like this be able to trigger internal lights to turn on might be a valuable thing. Again, instead of simply having people manually turn lights on or manually turn lights off, you know, you could have a sensor and this sensor says, okay, if the light in the environment is over 80, then turn the lights off and then the clouds go overhead and so it goes oh okay if it's if it's under 70 you know between let's say 60 to 70 turn these particular lights on and then we'll turn those lights. And then if it gets darker, then go, oh, but if it's between 40 to 50, then turn these lights on and these lights on, right? So you can create an, an automatic uh, system to turn lights on and off based off of what's going on in the outside world. So that's how little sensors like this can be valuable. And it's one of those things to be thinking about. It's like, okay, what, what conditions in the world um, do, is, is lighting important for? Again, lighting's important for plants. Lighting's important for office space, work environments, what other places is lighting important for, and then think about how you can use one of these sensors in order to trigger physical events uh, to make things better for your, your clients and customers. So with that, as always, I enjoy doing this video and look forward to seeing you at the next one.